Okay, well, let's do this thing, all right? Go ahead, go, shoot. Hey, I'm here live with my friend from Pasadena, California for Monster Palooza 2023. How do you feel? I feel great. What's wrong with your voice? I don't know. You tell me. Done too much, too much drugs in the 80s. This Freaky guy. Friday. <laughs> We're here live with Max on Zebra's team all weekend long. Come on, take the ride. It's a great freaking hey. booth. <laughs> Wow, Monster Palooza, everybody! Wow, can you believe it? We took you with Paul Gabriel and Ian Robinson. Just want to touch base with you guys as the show continues into day two. Paul Gabriel, what are your sentiments so far? What's the fanfare been like for you? It's been outstanding. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of people have been coming up, seeing about the sculpts. There, there is a lot of creep for there sure. Everyone's in costumes. Yeah. Everyone's in costumes. John Mahoney's posters have been flying off the table. We've noticed that the pink and blue one. There's a lot of people that like pink. That the, the pink one favorite. seems yeah. to be the popular one. We're also giving away the Steve Wang bus. A lot of people have been looking forward to that. We got Rick Baker's. Uh, bus too that he did okay. in ZBrush here for people to take a look and take pictures. So it's been a lot of fun. It looks like it sounds like you're having a lot of fun here. I'm enjoying. You know, okay. we're all big dorks. I, a large I, child, as I said. It's been a great time so yeah. far. Hey, Ian Robinson, hey, you've up, been Louis? you've been here behind the table, yeah. answering questions, helping people with the ZBrush. What are, what is some of your uh, commentary about that, and how are people receiving the ZBrush here for the first time ever at Monster Palooza? This is the first time ever. Yeah. yeah. Well, small. this is my first time as yeah. well, but. Fans are just loving it. They're surprised that they can take something digital and make something physical. Because we have this gremlin over yeah, here. Yeah, put the and finger on that one. Look at that. So this gremlin, we, we just keep telling them that ZBrush can help them make their digital monsters come to reality. And they are just loving it on top of it. Especially that 3D printed Rick Baker piece. It's That's just, the beauty. everybody's going nuts. Yeah. The show continues. On behalf of Ian, Paul, I'm Louis Tucci. We'll see you soon. Yeah. With Immortal Masks, thank you so much for taking the time. You're welcome. To speak You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Yeah, it's amazing. So, tell us a little bit about uh, what goes into this process. We're one of the world's largest silicone mask companies. Uh, started in a garage 12 years ago, and now it's a 40 full time artist and a pretty big operation. My partner, Andrew Freeman, and I uh, basically started it, it predominantly in the film effects world, um, and we saw this kind of niche product with this material that People are starting to get used to using, which is platinum silicone. Been around for a while, but utilizing it in a commercial sense that we were, hadn't really been done yet. Um, there was two companies out before us. We just had an idea that maybe we could take it and make, elevate it and bring it out. And so we brought a couple of things that we've been using specifically in film effects into uh, the commercial aspect of making these masks, um, worked on how they were gonna fit and they're gonna move and kind of one mask, we got the next mask, we got the sure. next mask. Um, and for years we did everything traditionally and then you guys came along and, and um, we joined the digital rev revolution. Now we're actually printing and, and we're doing a lot of work and modeling in ZBrush. So too. you're, doing, you're, you're yes. taking the process of the digital and turning it into 3D prints yes. and then casting yes. and molding these things yeah. that way. Wow, yeah. that's fascinating. Yeah. What well, can you tell us? Uh, let's talk a little bit about the technology even further. Sure. You've got uh, Flex Fusion. What can you tell the people at home watching about Flex so, Fusion? So we, we call it Flex, Flex Fusion and Flex Fusion is basically the utilization of uh, power mesh. Uh, mesh material to fortify strength and then actually work it as a benefit uh, for the silico mask and how it moves. So not only is a, is a full mesh encapsulation of the mask beneficial for like tear resistance, um, but it also takes everything and snaps it back to the core, which is uh, the wearer's head. Um, so we can build out farther uh, from the core, uh, uh, bigger distances, because we know that the mesh is gonna pull everything back. Right. So, um, so it was kind of a, a, a two for one deal that when we first started doing it, we're like, well, this is gonna help out, you know, not have to keep repairing masks. Right on, and so that yields a, a more tight fitting mask it that's does. more yes. aligned with the person's, the construction of the person's face, yes. is what you're saying. Yes. And, uh, and again, like, because silicone is such a soft material, I mean, it's great because it moves just like skin, but that same soft material is also prone to, to damage. Um, so silicone is the type of thing that if you got like a pinhole, it'll, it'll, it'll prick in there, it could run and make a running tear. So by putting a, me a mesh encapsulation inside of it, you could like kind of puncture through it, but if you needed to, it wouldn't run, and you could literally stitch it back together and re-silicone it up. Okay, wow, this is fascinating yeah. stuff. I'm so glad that we had a chance to stop in and talk with you. I'm, thanks so for stopping by, thanks yeah. guys.
here again on the floor of Monster Palooza with Raf Grissetti. It's a, it's a joy to see you again in person. My pleasure. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us. So maybe it's okay to say at this point, you might not need an introduction. A long storied career with the God of War franchise. And, uh, and you've been at the ZBrush game. I've, I've known you for a number of years. Just want to say thanks for the continued contributions. Thank you, man. It's been a long time, for sure. Yeah. I don't even know what is my year on this event. I think probably seven years, maybe six, seven. We're getting on, but we're not going to age ourselves. So you, you spent all those years in a, in a senior role, guiding the boat, uh, managing the ship when it comes to the God of War sort of visualizations. What's been going on now? There's a big change for you, a transition. Can we talk about it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a little more of a natural transition, like trying to do something new. Like you said, I've been in the franchise for a long time, maybe 10, 11 years. So just getting the chance to do something new, it's exciting for me. I think we all go through that at yeah. some point. I think it was just my time. Uh, I have good, good opportunities and then just decided to jump on it. Yeah. I think, I think for me, the most poignant thing is the transition also into the DC and Marvel comic covers. Mm -hmm. I was really proud of, of the moment to see that happening with you. And, and showcasing the transition from like the 3D to the 2D. Yeah. And you had mentioned it, you had alluded it, I think to, at one point in a Zebra Summit, you had said, oh, I'm, I'm thinking of a new process, you know? Yeah. Tell us about how that happened. Well, first of all, thanks for bringing that up because it's a tough transition, especially if you've been into the industry and understanding the comic side of things. Just getting the chance to do some of the, those, those covers and working comics. I mean, I grew up with comics. That's one of the reasons why I started to do what we do. Like a lot of my work has a lot of influences. So, you know, I think I built a uh, following that people like, appreciate what I do. And I was able to transition into doing more of that stuff, trying to be a little more flexible into what goes into 3D, and then the paint overs on top of it, looking sure. at composition. I think when we go into the industry, a lot of the work is focused on the model, how good does it look, production side of things. So learning, especially going to our direction, like learning the composition, learning color, all that stuff, I think went into making that you know a little bit easier it's still a challenging process yeah, especially because the turnarounds are so quick but it's super fun i love it. the moment i arrived when i saw the comic tom feed on youtube and I, you know comic tom's like always oh, got new stuff going on you that yeah, that yeah. one that one off for them and i knew then i was like wow the zbrush situation is changing forever and i'm so happy to see that so i'm glad glad to hear that yeah, tom is amazing i follow his stuff and i think Same. it was one of those partnerships that yeah you know it's, it's the only can bring good things for them. I think you and I share that in the comic book, the love affair continues. I want to thank you, Raphael Grissetti. Thank you, man. Thanks for taking this side. It's my pleasure, man. If you want to talk to the boss, you got to go through me. He doesn't like to talk. Power. I'm here live on the floor with David Igo from Tweeterhead. Thanks for taking a moment to talk. Yeah, man. Us. Yeah. yeah ZBrush game for a long time. Yeah. Tell us what's going on. We've been working with ZBrush for like a long time now. Lets us work with like a ton of artists all over the world. We have a great team. And I love it. it. Makes a very collaborative process. And we're here to show off all of our wares between DC, He Man, and we have a brand new monster line too we're working on. The so we're showing man. off a bunch of cool stuff. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And you've been at the ZBrush game for a long time yourself personally. Yeah, I don't know, like 15 years. I think I was part of it when it was ZBrush 1.5 and it scared me away and I came back when ZBrush 2 came out. So whenever yeah. that was. But you're still a faithful one. You're still yeah, at it. yeah, no, I love it. It gets better and easier. I still teach it. I love teaching it. It gets better and easier to use all the time. Do you think that it's affected, the, the impact of that has had an effect on your teaching as well? You're saying? Yeah. So yeah. it's easier to just get people to wrap their minds. Yep. Than, yeah, I'm like, I felt like I waited too long. I'm like, it's easier now to jump in than it was 10 years ago. Now okay. it's easier. Yeah. Well, easy on a Saturday afternoon is what we try to be. Thanks so much, David yeah. Igo and Tweeterhead. Yeah, thank totally. you. Thank you. About to phone home with our old faithful friend, the 1980s icon ET. I'm here with Steve Wang. Steve, thanks so much for taking this. Oh, time my to speak pleasure. With Thank us. you for coming by here. And the elite experience, the creature collectibles experience is spot on. Look at this thing. I mean, what can be said? How many hours does it take to get something like this done? Uh, it was a lot. Yeah, because this this one here is sculpted traditionally in clay by my wife and I. 
Uh, so with, I think it took us about a month to do it because we had to do it, make some changes. And then, then we have to mold it and cast it, which takes a few weeks. Because usually when we make a prototype, we don't just do one. We do three of them, including mold masters, paint masters. Sure. And then we get into eyes, you know, which the, a studio called Ford Seal Studios did for us. Um, they did a wonderful job. And then we have the lighting as well. Uh, and that takes time to like actually figure out the layers. There's a whole sculpture inside you don't see that has a heart. Um, so that it causes a certain type of shadow that we have to, you know, R&D and experiment. And then the whole programming of the light. You notice there's like little heartbeats on him. Yeah, I was noticing that, that there's some fluctuation happening inside yeah. of here, you know, and there's, there's this idea that um, you can really feel the sense of life and liveliness about it, you know? Yeah, we usually, do, when we do one of these collectibles, we try to capture a moment in the character's you know, life or in the, in the movie. You've captured a lot of moments through the years. Yeah. Though. You've worked on Drive, you've worked on Predator. I have to say, for the people at home, Predator is something... <laughs> My family and I watch this. My sisters specifically and I watch Predator at Christmas. Oh, really? It's like our Christmas movie. It's our Christmas movie. Uh, describe some of the some of the impact of that on your life and career as a whole, having worked on such an iconic and influential uh, property. When I, when I first worked on Predator, it was really weird because it was just a little project nobody wanted to do. And I was like, Stan Winston, and Stan's like, yeah, I want you to help design this with me and build it. It's like, okay, it was, it was a nightmare. We had eight weeks to do everything, which is very short. Went down, shot it. We came back. We're like, oh, thank God, we're done with this thing. And then when it came out in the summertime, it just blew up. Yeah, I had exactly. no idea. And then then my phone was ringing off the hook. I got like 15 job offers in one month. So from that one, you kind of have this huge springboard into yeah, into I, this. Then I got so many opportunities after that. You're leaving a mark for future generations to come yeah. to have you as a barometer for someone to look to. So I want to say thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Matt Hawkins from Terrorific Toys. Tell us a little bit about this terrific extravaganza we've got going on here. Yeah, uh, so my background is actually in animatronics and theme park stuff, but cool. uh, my daughter was coming with me to the show years ago, and uh, we decided that there was kind of a missing niche in, in Monster Palooza, so we started making cute monster toys. Um, kind of the same processes we use on animatronics. Okay. You know, uh, working with traditional clay initially, but we moved on to ZBrush on some of these characters. Um, they look phenomenal. The detail yeah. is really spot on. Like if you get in that face there, you got the eyeballs. It's really yeah. And even some of them are mechanized so that like they got like uh, posable eyes. You know, you can oh Lord. you can I've seen it all. yeah, you can repose the eyes. It's posable eyes. Like. But uh, yeah, it's it's just uh, it's kind of weird. Thanks for taking the time to tell us sure. about it, Matt Hawkins. Appreciate that. basically twins, you know what I mean? Obviously, I look better. I'm here with Akihito Ikeda, uh, known as Aki. Hi. It's so nice to see you. Nice to meet you, Louis. Thanks, thanks for speaking with me. And we're just catching up and talking about some current events. So what are you currently working on here, telling me? Uh, so last year, so I walked on the red one, which is uh, Dwayne Johnson is uh, starring. And the then, Rock. Uh, rock, yes. And then that was supposed to be out next year. And you're probably very excited about this. You have a long standing career. You've worked on so many things. Deadpool 2. Yes. Uh, Hunger Games, Dragon Ball, <laughs> right? Yeah. Dragon Ball Z. Yes. Uh, I did it in the Guardian of the Galaxy and the Iron Man and the, I think the Jurassic World. Your careers also spanned some very different uh, encounters where you were doing some fashion many years ago. Uh -huh. you, had a, you had amalgamated so uh -huh. your, your sculpture work and design work into a fashion show in Japan. What, what's, what prompted that kind of thing? When I was younger, I, I want to be the specific makeup artist, kind of pop makeup artist. And then, but uh, I'm very interested in the fashion show. And then no one make a specific makeup fashion show. I want to do something which is uh, no one touch it. Right. Creating something unique and new for which is uh, no one make. So I like design stuff and then kind of the... I have a lot of ego. I want to take this one. I want to sure. be the special makeup artist and I want to be the fine artist. Kind of the, sometimes it's losing my mind which way is best. So, because you went from being traditionally, we have some traditional sculptures here at the booth, mm -hmm. uh, and you've also moved into a place where now you're doing uh, exclusively yeah. in ZBrush at this yes. point, right? I mean, the ZBrush is uh, way better than the hand sculpting, which is uh, no space. Right. We don't need a big space. Hand sculpting, we need a big space, but sure. uh, ZBrush just need a 
powerful computer. Mm-hmm. And then we don't need a mold making and we don't need a, need a the seaming or something. Just a, just a, just a 3D printer, a, even 3D on the top printing, of a desk. Yes. Right? So with a laptop and a desktop 3D yes. printer, you've got which everything. Mean, yeah, which means that I can keep working my movie cool. project and also the, my fine art using a ZBrush. Where can people learn more about your stuff? What's the website they should visit? I think it's studioaki.com. Yeah, studioaki.com. I want to thank you so much on behalf of myself and everyone on the Maxon team. Thanks for taking the thank time to, to chat with us. Buenos días, damas y caballeros. Estamos aquí en Monsterpalooza 2023 con nosotros amigo Gabriel Garcia. ¿Qué tal? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, bonito. So, it's a, it's a good time to see you. Sí, You're here doing the Zoom. Ok, dime qué está pasando con tus uh, tu, tu cosas aquí. Especial. Bueno, eh, tenemos algunas piezas que estaba haciendo en ZBrush. Bueno. Um, estos son unos magnets, cell phone stands, and then over here we have some busts and scopes. All bus. digital. You've been at this a long time with a yeah. major, major franchises yeah. and things. You've been doing this for a long time. You're now with Diamond Select, I believe. Exactly. Yes. Okay. It's been almost 20 years man, working. It's a long time. Yes. We go back, you and me. Yes. Yes, okay. definitely. When well, you were there. Absolutely. And so these are the personal works happening here on the floor. Yeah. 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 I try to do something like original, interesting. Genio. Genio. Never a dull moment. I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Thank Gracias. You. Muchísimas. Oh. Buenos días a todos. Here we are. I have the dubious pleasure of being on the floor at Monster Palooza with none other than Simon Spider Zero Lee. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Thank We're you. just waxing poetic about the aesthetic quality of your work, uh, instantly recognizable. The traditional stuff, let's talk about that first. Uh, there's a bit of a wildness to it or sort of a looseness to it. How do you maintain that? Well, um, that's just how I've always created, you know, since the beginning. So uh, I've always tried to capture the emotional side of the design of the uh, artwork. Uh, and I try to try to you know keep consistent with that, whether it's my traditional work or my digital work. Okay. So I'm, I'm actually uh, when I do my professional work, I'm mostly a digital sculptor. Right, using you know, the ZBrush. Of course. Using ZBrush, yeah. of course. And you were, we were talking off camera about yeah. uh, you're, you're also engaged in teaching students. Yes. And those students are how do they how do you find that sort of dialogue with them? Is it uh, easy to sort of translate the traditional stuff to the digital stuff in that space? Yes, I, you know, actually when I teach, I've been teaching for well over a decade and yeah. most of my students has been uh, digital artists and ZBrush users. And uh, the way that I teach, I don't try to convert them into to become a traditional artist. But what I am doing is try to communicate the knowledge that I've gained through traditional work and how to apply it digitally, you right. know, uh, because it is a mindset, like you said before, you know, to be able to control that sense of motion and emotion, how do we capture that in digital work as well? You know, so that's what I teach. I teach uh, the artists how to get in touch with themselves so that when they use their tool, they're not just thinking about, here's the tool, how do I use right. it? They're thinking, they're feeling what they're experiencing and try to express that through their tools. Right, through the, through the movement and such and the aesthetic of the look that I've seen. Yeah, here. because when you, can, when you can affect the artist, you can affect the art, right? I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, known for Pacific Rim, among others. Uh, I want to thank you so much. AAA Games, you're involved in so many things. I think for me, most significant is the posture and gesture of your work. It remains with me long after I've seen the work, so I want to thank you uh, for taking the time to talk well, to us today, you. and thank I really appreciate it. it. Thank you. Appreciate it. I've got Frank Zhang and members of the Naughty Dog team. You never know who you're going to run into at Monster Palooza. It's another incredible day. Frank, tell us a little bit about what's been going on with the team. You know, obviously the team, half the team is here, you know. We're very excited to be in the Monster Palooza. Awesome. And a lot of us come here like last year. Sure. And then this year seems like an even better 
a better group, bigger it's a, group, a, a yeah. bigger event, right? Yeah, definitely. And you've got the evolution tools, all of you. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I got, I didn't get it, but I got one last year, so I that counts this. too. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks for stopping and saying hello to us. I, yeah. We appreciate it on behalf of all the team here. It's great to have you guys. Nice to bump into you. Hey, we're here again on the floor. We've got Tan B with Evolucio. Thank you. Always a pleasure. You've got some amazing yeah. Ecrochets. Tell us a little bit about what's going on and how the ZBrush is making the process easier for you. Yeah, so basically we are developed a series of animal anatomy. Originally come from the anatomy tools where they did the human figure like that, right? So now we take the idea and then start to do more for uh, the animals and then use them as references for the artists in the industry or whoever willing to study more about the animals. Yeah, what's, what's underneath it? If you want to study the form, you need to see what's going on, right? Sure. So without the skin, you see all the muscles where they're going to give you the form and then see uh, how the, the, the muscles can help to form the animal, give you the volume and then we put them in motion as well. That's uh, something rare. To see nowadays and uh, try to help you guys to see what the muscle looks like within pose. Yeah, they look incredible and I think they're a fantastic resource and evidenced by the many people who are walking around with the boxes. If you can, get on to tell them where they can buy some online. Yeah, we are having the evolution.com, so evolution art, yeah, everything done in ZBrush, so really helpful, especially the new feature, Praxi Pose, that's the one sold to me. Oh, you're very welcome, it. yeah, it's our All pleasure. Right, so Okay, well, thanks for taking the time to talk All to right. us, Tan. Thanks so I much. Pleasure as always. Thank you so much, guys. You never know who you're going to bump into here on the floor at Monster Palooza 2023. I'm here with Cesar DeCall Jr legendary zbrush user thank you louis what, thank you what is going on my fellow torontonian what have you been up to uh we've been busy man we've been busy uh, i'm over at we effects right now okay. and uh it's a post house we do a lot of uh you know we're working a lot of shows and we're uh, we're currently working on well i can't say what we're currently working on but we've we've uh we've got a couple of shows out there um uh from right now is airing and uh that's you know we're the main house on from and cool. so we're very very excited that's getting a lot of popularity and, and getting a lot of uh, a lot of eyeballs. You know, Stephen King just kind of tweeted it out and whatnot, awesome. and that that was really exciting for the whole team. Uh, Foo Bar, we did Foo Bar, so that's on uh, Netflix right now with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and obviously Cabinet Curiosities. Cabinet curiosity, uh, we did exactly. a bunch of stuff, so yeah. We've been busy, man. We've been people, busy. If people don't know, uh, Cesar, you've been at this for a, a while and laid the foundations for a lot of people to learn a lot of things. And I just wanted to stop you here on the floor and say thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's yeah, it's just been incredible. And I'll see you soon up in the north. Thanks, man. Peace. I'm here with my old time friend, Christopher Hilseth. Hey. Good to see you, man. Good How you been? You Very good. Okay. Yourself, dude? I'm fantastic. I can't believe we're here on the floor again yeah, and it's I'm wonderful nervous. to see people in person. Let's get a shot of the wares. Yeah. What can you tell us? What have you been up to? Dude, uh, you know, I've just been making toys, soft vinyl, resin, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, you know, working in ZBrush day and night. Uh, you know, I've been utilizing it for the last six, seven years. Yeah. Talk to us about the process and so, how you get going with this kind of thing. You know, sometimes uh, we work from sketches that we do ourselves or we uh, hire a friend of ours to kind of do some turns. We take the, the turns and import them into ZBrush and kind of map out the engineering for a lot of these guys. Make sure that the articulation is correct with the booling and uh, all that. And we develop a sculpt, we 3D print it in resin and we polish it up and just make sure everything fits and that it balances. And then once we feel like the prototype is at a point where we're comfortable with it, sending it off to the factory, we send it to the factory, make sure that the samples are correct and you know go from there. Also, oh, yeah. you got started uh, really actually not too long ago. Oh, yeah. And this is a true testament yeah. to what can be done. Yeah, I, I started trying to learn ZBrush on my lunch break, bothering all the other artists. Right. 
and uh, we worked together. Yes, time. yes, we did. We did. <laughs> Uh, so I would, you know, take my lunch, which meant sitting in on other people using the program and trying to uh, do my own at home or even like after hours just to try and learn it. Uh, but I'm glad that I stuck with it. I'm glad that I, you know, watched all the uh, uh, shows that you guys do, learned, learned a lot of cool skills. This guy here is, and, I, I have the yeah, first prototype yeah. of this one. I want to draw attention to this figure. I've got the first prototype yeah. signed yeah. and this is a King Jaguar. The original, this is number two out of 75. So if you're watching at home, you two yeah. can get it. Where can they get this stuff? LastFashionStudio.com. Christopher, thank you so much yeah. for your time. Thanks, man. It's a pleasure.